get started. So what we're doing here is uh, my friend Mike, he runs a, a deal that's called Flat Hat Videography. Videography, that's a hard word for me to say. Uh, anyway, he jumped over the hill here, came visit me in, in Nevada. Uh, we're riding some horses around, doing some stuff. And on top of all that, he needs his horn rewrapped. So I said, cool, let's rewrap your horn. But I, got, I want you guys to check him out. Um, you can go to YouTube, Flat Hat Videography. He does some really, really cool stuff with drones. We got like 17 cameras floating around here. Um, and make your horse sale videos. Um, you did some uh, memorial stuff. Uh, um, just really cool deal. Check him out. And, and uh, if, if you want some horse videos, he does a hell of a good job. But we're going to wrap his horn. That's what we're going to worry about right here. So I've, I've been told that these cameras we got can see everything I'm doing. So I'm just going to roll with it. Where I'm looking right here, essentially what has happened is, is his horn has just come unwrapped. It's supposed to be under this part right here. It's just kind of come out. So that's actually not the end of the world. We're going to put a new wrap on it and fix it. But if this happens to you and you're at a branding or anything, got my handy dandy little Marlin spike I packed around here everywhere with me. A guy, and a, you can use a lot of other stuff. A guy essentially, if you were in a fix, could get that to where it's going to get you through the rest of the day if you're at a branding or something like that. Um, but having it loose the way it was, where it was essentially undone, that's, that's, that's where you lose a finger when you dally and everything gets all wadded up. And, and uh, so we don't want to do that. So we're going to unwrap this son of a gun. My brother would reuse this wrap if it was up to him, but he's not here. So this saddle is made by J.A. Kiss in Modesto, California. It's a really good feeling saddle. Really nice saddle, it's a heavy bugger though. But you see he's got it nailed under here, or tacked. Some guys do it differently, but I'm gonna follow suit with that tack. And you can just pull these out. All right, and then these tacks are still in really good shape. So I'm gonna reuse them. Every one of my saddles has got a horseshoe nail under there instead of these tacks, but these ones are in good shape. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna keep using them. So we've got our mule hide here. What we did is we soaked this over lunch and it, uh, it got some uh, uh, fly spray spilled on it. And so it, it feels a little funny, but it's not gonna hurt anything. Get that out of the road. It's, anyway, so it's not gonna hurt anything. Got it all wrapped up here, got it soaked. Uh, when I get done soaking them, I like to put them in a plastic bag, a little Walmart bag put them on the dashboard of the pickup or just somewhere warmish. Um, it just kind of breaks it down a little bit, makes it a little easier to wrap. It's going to be easier to just get this the easy way. You don't actually have to hit these nails, you just gotta scare them in. See?
I didn't want to do it like that because I didn't want to get the mule tape dirty, but it's not the end of the world. wraps you want to start out start out with it tight oh. and that is why you bush them around with a plastic bag come up through there I'm trying to do this the, the same way the saddle maker did it because this is Mike's saddle and he likes it. I like to come over this way and almost all saddle makers come around the other way. It lays a little flatter the way they do it. I'll take my marlin spike again and I'm just going to lay it in there like that so that way I've already kind of got a Kind of got a little spot for this to go. I've got that wrapped around my hammer. I'm using my hammer to uh, get all the, get it tight. Saddle makers have a little tool. And pardon me for this fact that this is non PC, but it's not my fault what the name of it is. They've got a little tool called a Chinaman to do this, to keep it tight. The saddle's going to smell like fly spray. <laughs> keep the flies away. Got everything in there. I'm trying to just keep everything flat, pretty. I want to make sure when I come down here in front that I've got it like this. That's where the groove of the rope's going to sit. If I've got it up like this, it'll catch and loosen it the way, the way it did that the one we just took off did. Tighten her one more time. And you guys see I'm just I'm not reefing on this like I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger, because I'm not, but I'm, I'm, I'm just bumping it, giving it a little bit of pressure, and kind of gradually getting that out, getting all that tension. Here's the hard part. Oh, you son of a gun. Like I said, you can do this with needle nose pliers, but I didn't have any laying around. I've always got this little spike in my pocket. Dang, it should be almost there. That uh, 
slice for it, it's kind of slippery. There we go. So you see it's just kind of watered up here and it's slippery enough I can't get a hold of it. So I'm just gonna keep jimmying around until I get it. There, I got it. Because that was a little more difficult than normal. I'm going to go ahead and pull everything tight again. There we go. Slipper through. Some guys like to cut this off. I'm gonna let that be your decision. Some guys like to cut this off. Um, I know guys like Deeth, he likes them extra long and then he just runs them through here and over the course of the branding season as he burns through this, he'll just pull it out, throw another wrap around there. Um, but I'll let you cut it. So then I just take with my hammer here and any spot that they overlap, tap them make everything lay flat and smooth okay we're almost done Still good and wet like this. See, I built some grooves in there. Go up higher. Now, as that dries, that uh, those grooves in tomorrow when we ride, we'll go ahead and take a rope, tie it to a post, and just have you dally and just ride off a few times. This will probably still be pretty moist. We'll get those grooves in there tight, but everything's just going to fall right into those grooves now. You don't have to do the groove thing at the end there. If it's already wet, it's already there, I, I like to do it. Um, it saves you saves you one time of it slipping real fast the first time you rope off of it. One thing I wanted to point out here, and just, I, over the years, I don't know how many times I've wrapped a horn and then looked at it and gone, oh my God, you're a moron. Because I wrapped them backwards. And you, you can kind of think, well, in fact, one time I did, I thought, well, there's no backwards. It doesn't make any difference. And then if you, if you wrap these counterclockwise, which we dally counterclockwise, when you dally, if you slip rope, everything will just go and come, come on down and then, then you just got to tie off to your horn and, and be done for the rest of the day. Uh, so you dally counterclockwise, so you always wrap these clockwise. And essentially what you're doing is as you're slipping rope, you almost tighten this down a little more. At some point you've got it as tight as it'll get, um, but it tightens down a little more. So counterclockwise, clockwise to wrap. Just keep that in mind. Um, and you'll only make the mistake once of thinking it doesn't matter. So anyway, there we are. We're wrapped. Pretty easy. Thank you so much to, to the Patreon crew. You guys are the reason we were able to do this and uh, and do the extra things and, and, and really do all the YouTube videos too. We wouldn't be able to wouldn't be able to make it work without you guys. So thank you so much. 
and any of the rest of you you can jump on and watch any of these these extra kind of things that, that we do on patreon and and see what's going on there so check that out if you can